Back everybody. It is Tuesday and that means it is time for a new round of our antiques appraisal game called What's it worth with antiques expert Dr. Lori and Dr. Lori is joining us from her studio in Bucks County. What is the theme of your table today, Dr. Lori? Outdoor barbecue with your oldest cookbook. <gasps> I have an old cookbook. I should show you sometime. It's it's not worth anything. There are food stains all over it. I can promise. Yeah, but food you. stains are part of the value goes up if there's food stains. That means you used it. Really? Oh, <laughs> good. Then I'll send right? you some pictures. <laughs> yeah, because the kids are going back to school and stuff. You got your last barbecue, a couple more weeks, and then we've got to do everything. You know how it goes. At the end of the summer, it we is. used it all up, all the fun. <laughs> all right, well, speaking of barbecue and cooking and all of that, uh, Virginia sent us in a picture of a glass bowl. I don't know if she uses this for cooking or baking, but let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look. Beautiful. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's is, pretty. It is pretty. American Brilliant Cut Glass. This particular bowl is in the Corinthian pattern, so you've got to learn the patterns. Now, of course, you know, Pittsburgh is the glass city. So, of course, these pieces are very, very typical to be part of the Pittsburgh vernacular when it comes to objects. It's a nice piece. I think it's about 10 inches across, 10 inches in diameter. And it's, again, cut glass, probably in her family, handed down from the early 1900s. So what do I, you think? I was thinking more of like a cooking bowl, but this is like a decorative bowl. Yeah, it's a decorative bowl. You know, you could put in candy for after your barbecue. <laughs> right, right. Did you I say where did it come from? Did it come from Europe or is it American made? I think it's American made. Okay. And, you know, as I said, a lot of glass pieces, of course, in Pittsburgh. Okay. It's All beautiful. Right. I'm listening to your words carefully. <laughs> a okay. lot is a what lot. Any questions? Okay. What do you think? No, I'm going to guess $75. I'm going to guess $125. Worth $90. Oh, who's. Who's I'm, closer? That's oh, you're not, closer. You're closer. <laughs> Oh, you I can tell. You this is why we do what we do. We're no good at math. You said nine <laughs> minus. <Yeah. seven. laughs> I get the point. Okay, all right, great. all right. <laughs> Heather gets the point. Now the next one is a child's rocking chair, and a viewer named Ian sent this in, right? Yeah, this is wonderful. I didn't have a child's rocking chair as a kid. My mother would put a big pasta pan on the floor and say, "Sit there," <laughs> and I would sit on the other side of the pasta pan. I'm not kidding you. It was because I was little and she was older and she was like, I can't have you running around while I'm cooking. <laughs> so anyway, but these are the chairs that other kids had. This particular piece is a nice chair. It is lit. It is pyrography. So the back of that is actually burned out to make the decoration. Ooh. It has arms. So this kid could re actually, you know, rest his little arms, which is nice. <laughs> it's hard bottom and late 19th century, late 1800. And this is like miniature size. This is for a child. Yes, it's for okay. a child. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um. And do, mm -hmm. did you say where it was made? Like, would it have been um, mass produced or? It has a German origin, and yes, mass produced. How many of them would exist today in America? A lot. Most people keep oh. those chairs the way I kept the old spaghetti pot. <laughs> did you really keep the spaghetti pot? Your old yeah, chair. Yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah. All right, I may be way <laughs> under guessing, but I'm oh. going to guess 175. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy. What did you guess? A thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. Okay, Heather, you have to reassess. It's worth 175 dollars. <laughs> you mean it's worth exactly what I picked or chose? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can oh, see. Oh, that's, that's what I meant. Yeah. That's what you meant. You just added an extra digit. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. $10,000, $100,000, yeah. All right, we're tied up at this point. This is where I start just going off the deep end. All right, up next, Deborah has a clown figurine. Okay. Huh. Figurines, mass-produced, a mm. lot of them out there, right. right? This one's made in Japan. And Middle I'm, part of the 1900s. And are clowns popular to, like, collect? Because clowns you know, are a little scary to me. Clowns are, you know, clowns are rough. There are a lot of people who don't like clowns, a lot of people who love clowns. It depends on your clown. In the 1950s and 60s, clowns were big. Red Skelton, the clowns, okay. Yeah. And then, you know, at the beginning of the 20th century with Ringling Brothers, clowns were big. The end of the 20th century, we didn't get so clown interested, you know, kind of wavered. Yeah, we had it. So mm. it's about, I think it's about eight inches tall. It is made of hand glazed, hand painted porcelain. Porcelain, okay. Hand. 
Oh, this one's tough too. I'm, I'm, I went the other way on this one. I, okay. yeah, I, I don't, I, I get made You want to go, go first? I, I guessed a hundred dollars. I guessed thirty-five dollars. It's worth forty dollars. <gasps> You're so close. Whoa. Okay. Oh. I might have a chance. This today. is getting far more competitive. All right. Next. Oh, we're getting it. <laughs> Wait, okay. Dr. Lori. Full disclosure what? here. David was yeah. going to Google what this next thing was because we have no you idea what Google. it is, and I well, told him, "Do not Google." I, well, I, so I, I told her. I said, "Is this anyway. a misprint?" I, like, I didn't know what a foo dog was. <laughs> and so I, I was like, Heather, is it okay to Google this? And she said, do not Google. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about this, Dr. Lori. This is well, for you Mitch. Know, you, have, you have me. I'm the walking brunette Google. I mean, you don't need Google. <laughs> anyway, well, um, I wasn't going to look at are, prices. I was just going to find out what it was. <laughs> well, but again, you have me. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the actual... Those pieces are called foo dogs. They're sentinel figures in the Asian culture. So you'd see them like, like you know, two lions at the New York Public Library in Asia. They'd be two foo dogs, and they usually are protectors of the emperors in Asian in Asian countries. So these particular pieces are not all that tall. They're about I think they're about 12 to 15 inches tall each, and they always come in pairs. So they'd be on either side of a throne or either side of a major doorway either side of a temple as you enter places like, you know, Japan or such, okay? They are ceramic, they okay. are all white glaze, right? So they are porcelain as well, and they have the pair, which is important for value. So you said they're 12 to 15 inches, so this would be something for like a, a mantle or something? Yeah, you know, like this. Yeah. That's and how like a room, right? Where would it be to run across these now? I mean, I assume if they were made of jade or something, that would be rare. Okay, there are many in jade. There are many in porcelain. There are many in different materials, okay? Food dogs as a pair is important because they don't always have both of them in the set. The set collection value is going to be important. That's a hint, right? And then you also have, in fact, their age. They, they date from about the turn of the 20th century. So they're not all the way back to the 10th or 11th century AD. They're, you know, early 1900. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I love the look on your face when I you're just, guessing. Because I just don't, I don't know. I mean, I, this is just a shot in the dark. What are you well, saying? I'm you saying Heather. $300. I said $200. They're worth $500 for the pair. So you're both close, even though you don't know, right? You're saying, I don't know, I don't know, but you're both close because they're decorative objects. They are not related to a particular historical position. Right. They're just a figure that they're reproducing. About two hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars each, or five hundred for the pair. We keep learning from Dr. Lloyd. We do. We're becoming better guessers. And I this think. happens. You are. You're becoming better guessers. Yeah. <laughs> This, we're tied again. We're tied. Every every time. I know time this has this become happens. a thing now. Okay, Paula sent in <laughs> a cabinet. Oh. Okay. So here's There's a beautiful a picture. Pieces. Yeah. Top and bottom. Okay. So you've got the tablet, also from the early 1900s, and you'll notice that lovely arch form, and then you can see the inset wood with the with the glass, so you can see through it. That's mm -hmm. why we call it a china cabinet, so you can see through it. Mm -hmm. it. Has to have glass to be a china cabinet, otherwise you have a hutch, and it's usually open with no glass. So um, this is, of course, um, made with stencil, and they are mass produced, but in small numbers. So not everybody has one of these, but you could get it. You get it from a major manufacturer in the early years of the 1900s before 1910. Oh, so and the design on there is it specific to a certain uh, type of design or it's just a pretty design? It's sometimes called late Victorian, mm -hmm. early 20th century, and it is of course sometimes referred to as architectural cookie cutter because you see all the cutout. Okay. okay, you go first. I went 2000. I went 1700. Worth fifteen hundred dollars. Good guesses. Oh, look at, oh, swear oh, word, swear word, swear word. Oh, Why do you win every time? I just won three in a row, Heather. Before that, you are counting. you were on a roll. You're so you're counting. It's uh, I, well, I, Dr. Lori has helped me count. Yes. <laughs> well, David, you were on vacation. You were resting up, so that's why you won this week. That's, that's what I'm saying about that. Okay. <laughs> All right. You are going to be better guessers, and as we educate our eyeballs and look at more objects, it gets easier, it right? It does, yes. I think it yes. does. Well, I, I mean this in all sincerity. We learn so much from you each week. We love this. It's wonderful. 
I love this too. And thanks to you and Jill and all the viewers who are sending in great objects. I hope you're playing at home. All right. Thanks, Dr. Lori, so much. And remember, email your photos for a future episode of What's It Worth to PTL at KDKA.com. Dr. Lori will appraise as many as she can, and she is a regular PTL guest every Tuesday here on the show. In the meantime, you can look for Dr. Lori online and on YouTube.